Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Last time we checked in on this stuff, what I did was I took apart an old distributor. Uh, this is a knucklehead distributor, very similar to a panhead. And what we did was took it completely apart, took pictures of it, and then threw it in the carburetor chemicals to cook itself clean. So now it's all cleaned up and we're ready to put it back together. So let's get started. Alright, first thing was the distributor base, the end play, was bad on the shaft. Um, allowable tolerance there is one to five thousandths end play. And this one had about twenty-four thousandths. Measuring it like that, that's a three thousandth one. <clears throat> and I already did that. I already uh, replaced that shim. Here's the original shim and what I did was go to the hardware store with my little handy dandy caliper here I measured the original shim which has a wear spot in it so you're not getting a real true reading but the shaft is 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and I found that USS quarter inch washers fit the shaft perfectly so they're stamped out so they all vary a little bit see this one is ninety three thousandths this one is eighty thousandths they all came out of the same box of washers so by getting a handful of them I had a full selection of shims so there it is. I picked the best one and I put it on. I didn't have a pin for the end of the shaft, so I made one. I got a piece of uh, 1 8 rod. It seems this hole is 7 64ths, which is 0.1065 of an inch. An eighth of an inch is 0.125. So I ground this piece of rod down rather quickly and made a pin. I haven't, I haven't peened over the ends yet. But for demonstration purposes, there it is, and all it needs is for the ends to be shortened and peened over to make a perfect rivet to hold this gear on the shaft. I also lubed the shaft before I put it in place. There's two bushings in this housing, one in this section and one up above. These were in good shape, therefore we didn't need to replace them. So everything is good to go here, so we can set this aside now and get onto the distributor housing, the, uh, the top part of the, of the distributor. And with everything taken out of it, the only important thing left is that this insulator on this pin is present. It's important that that insulator is there so the points mechanism won't short out. Uh, the first thing we're going to put back in it is this stud. Now this stud has insulators on it, and so I very carefully disassembled and reassembled it so I would know how it went. Now there's an insulator on this end of it. We can see that, I think. And the old one was falling apart, therefore I cut a new one out of gasket material. This goes in from the bottom. And that's why the edges are rolled, so that it registers properly in the bottom of the distributor housing. And there it is. The next is an insulator on there. And that keeps it centered. That insulator there is extremely important. Once we put that on, then there's a brass washer, and then a nut that holds that whole stud assembly in place. And when this distributor is done, let's get a 5 16 wrench and tighten that up. Holding it in from the bottom so it stays centered between those two bumps in there. Okay. Tighten it up here. Get it good and tight. Remembering good and tight, these are small things. We don't want to break them. All right, that's it. 
Okay, the next thing would be the points assembly. And the points assembly is really difficult. And I'm going to look like real butterfingers doing this thing. But that's what's necessary. This little coil spring goes into this fiber block on the stationary side of the points. There's a bump right here in the arm that also registers on that spring. You hold that with your thumb and forefinger and you slide it over the pin and the insulators very carefully. I mean very carefully. And there it is in place. Once it's in place, we'll put the little steel plate back on. It holds the points assembly down. Make sure that's down in there good. Now I use a little screw starter here to make life easier for myself. You'll notice I went to the hardware store and replaced all these little number eight washers. I say replace, some of them were missing, but there they are. Again with a screw starter here. Missed it. There it is. Everything that you do here, almost everything you do, you want to leave nice and loose so you can get it all to center up in there properly. There it is. There it is. All right, the next thing would be the condenser and it's really important that there be a washer on the end of the condenser. Now that washer on the end of the condenser I'll show you in a minute what that does. Let's see, we have one more screw here to hold the condenser in place. Nice lock washer there. Don't want that loosening up. Alright. Now, this brass piece here is where the wire contacts from the points over to the condenser. And just like that. Now the reason for that washer on there was to hold that plate off of the condenser so that it doesn't short out. Next thing is a nut and a star washer on that. Put that in place. Washer back on this post that holds the brass contact plate here. and the nut goes in there. Now this brass piece is obvious to me that they made it so you could bend it so the whole thing can line up perfectly. There it is and there, there the, uh, the end of it goes on to the condenser. We can tighten that up now. That's all tight condenser is now locked down tightly. 
And there you have it. There's the points. And the condenser assembled perfectly. Now this wire, we don't want touching the base right in there. And it's not. So the next thing we have to do is to put this assembly here which allows us to advance and retard our timing. Again, cleaned it all up. I was going to paint these parts. By the time I got done cleaning them up, they just didn't need it. Surprised me. The base was already chromed. And the distributor head was in real nice shape. I think this is original CAD plating on it. Be nice to have it chrome. But there is the timing adjustment working perfectly. It's a little bit, there we go. Okay, now we're ready to assemble the distributor head to the base. And what I like to do is use a little grease in there. So we'll put some grease right around the inside here where the base is going to contact it which will make the timing for advancing and retarding when you actually ride the bike it'll make it slide real nice like butter I like to use white lithium grease it's so clean and nice alright here's the notch where the timing adjuster goes And what a nice fit that is, huh? Put that upside down for a moment. And this is the retainer that holds it on. And we want to put the two ends of this retainer so that they always clear the timing adjuster. And these two little detents here in this spring, we want to line up with the holes in the distributor housing right here. I would push that in there, you know what? Before I push that in there, I'm going to put a little grease on that too. And everything's going to be happy. Especially me. Right here on the ends is where it's going to rub. And anytime you have two pieces of metal rubbing together, you should lube them. is in place. Now we can take the cap retainer, slide it into that hole there, go to the other side, and slide it into that hole there. And there we have a complete knucklehead distributor operating its points that only need to be adjusted now. And the whole thing is ready to go with a new cap. And we have a restored distributor. And this one is set up for any 36 to 47 Harley, Harley twin. And any of the big twins. 61 inch, 74 inch, any of the overhead valve big twins. There it is, a swap meet special. And after a few hours of work, we're ready to go. So next time we meet, maybe we'll do a carburetor. I think we'll do a Linkert carburetor. So until then, see you on the road.